I, I want to ask you to consider ways in which you can support what I do here. You know, and I, I want to talk to people that have been around for at least three years. If you haven't been around for at least three years, then I'm going to give you a waiver and say you can, you can, you can, you can be a part of this as well. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've been here in Harlem for 40 years. I live in Harlem. I, Elizabeth and I, we wake up in Harlem. We wake up to cussing and fussing and horns and sirens and the F-bomb being dropped and rap music being played. We wake up in this environment every day of our lives and we go to sleep to the same sounds. Uh, they rock us to sleep. The sirens of the fire department, the police, they rock us to sleep every night. Um, and I don't plan to leave this community. I probably would have the means economically to live in a, a much quieter community, a community uh, with uh, less violence, if you will, and, it, and one that would give those who live there some sense of prestige because they're not living in the former ghetto of Harlem. And by the way, I have to tell you this. Let me confess this to you. I look out I'm, our living room window and it looks north onto, onto Lenox Avenue. And I see hordes of men in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s that are sick on canes, many crutches, some with one leg, many in wheelchairs, many on drugs. I see women of the same sort, ill-clad, haven't changed their underwear, don't own a roll of toilet paper, sleeping in a shelter, and they're just out there all day and all night. And I've been noticing over the past year that the number of those sorts are increasing. The streets are now jammed with poor looking people. And sometimes if you watch what goes on behind me, this is a west view of Lenox Avenue. Uh, you'll see, you don't see a lot of wealthy people. You don't see a lot of well-dressed. You see a lot of really poor ghetto looking people walking the streets every day in an area where just across the street, people have paid four and five million dollars for those buildings. They've paid, you know, four and five, two and three million dollars for condos. And yet they have not been able to turn Harlem into a palatial Beverly Hills. It's still a ghetto. And I have to confess, I have to tell you, every time I see that horde of, of, of uh, drug addicted men, men selling crack, men in wheelchairs, I don't thank God for their polite, but I thank God they're out there. Because of the 30 years and the billions of dollars that have been dumped in this community to try to make it a New York Beverly Hills has failed. It has failed. And last year, 30,000 people left this community, had bought million dollar homes, left this community because they see the streets are still littered. They, though they can go and close their doors and live in a $5 million brownstone, but once they go step outside that door onto the streets, they meet the depravity and the brokenness and the drug addiction that is so pervasive in this community. And I look out my window and I see it and I say, thank God. Not for the men's plight, but I say, thank God that Harlem it's still Harlem. This scene you see right here is right across the street from our church. And it's like that all day, every day. Drug sales. Where I'd walk out the front door of our church, within two seconds, I would be standing among those men. I, I want to ask you to consider helping me. I do. You watch me go through the Obama years. It was wholly unjust how much love I poured out. I, I, I don't know, someone said that all you have to do to find out how much love Pastor Manning has for Hamite, that's black people, just listen to him. Just, just listen to him. And, 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 and watch him. Don't just listen to watch what he says. Watch what he does. He lives among them. He educates their children. He feeds them. He prays over them. How could he hate them? I mean, you know, I thought that was so profound. Just listen to what he says and watch what he does. All this business about Pastor Manning being a hater of the brother is crazy as hell. He lives among them. He feeds them. He educates them. He helps them. People that hate somebody don't do that. 
You, you don't see haters feeding their, you don't see that. It is crazy. It is crazy what the LGBTQ and the Obama demons have poured into the hearts and minds of these black people, how many people on the streets, to cause them to call me a hater. It is, but he, he has evangelized them and lied on me. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to help me. I'm a faithful. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a stomp down soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a trooper. <laughs> I, you know, I, I 40 years, 40 years, 40 years, 40 years. I'm a trooper. I'm a soldier. I'm a stomp down man living in this community trying to help these people. Well, you know, it is a difficult thing to raise up a people. Listen, Moses, he failed with the first 40 years he had with Israel. He failed. That's how bad people can be. You, you ain't seen nothing till you got to lead them. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to come alongside me, stand up and help. Many of y'all can, can say, well, I want to give an endowment to the school. I want to send $100,000 or $10,000 to the school. I hear you're sending people to law school and medical school, and you know I hear you're sending people into these great universities and uh, you know, I hear your staff is going for their PhDs and, and their master's degree. And CNN ain't going to report that. But this is unusual that it's happening right here in this building on 123rd Street. You say, well, I want to endow it. I want to, I want to set up a trust fund of $100,000 or $50,000 or $20,000 to make sure that the education institution keeps going. And bringing in students and helping them, young, young boys, helping them to realize, Pastor Manny, you're doing this, and you've been doing it pretty much with the help of a lot of people from around the world. They give to you. You haven't done it by yourself. And a lot of people that sit right in the midst of you, that, that pray for you every day, that have stood with you over the years to help you to do this. But you say, well, Pastor, you know, I have it. I, I got all this retirement money. I've got, you know, I'm, my life is, let me do something. Let me reach out to you there in Harlem. I trust you, Pastor Manning. I trust you. You tell it like it is. Pastor Manning, you've even told me, you've, you've read me the riot act. I'm, I'm, I'm one of your people, but you jumped on me and read me the riot act. That means you ain't, you ain't a phony, Pastor Manning. And I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And if I invest in you, you're going to do the right thing. I mean, you've read me the Riot Act. You've read everybody else the Riot Act. You read Obama the Riot Act, and you read Trump the Riot Act. You didn't try to, you ain't trying to cover favor. Pastor Manny, you could have gone a long way in the Trump organization. You could have made a lot of money hanging on to Trump. You could have done that, but you didn't do it. I saw you walk away. I saw you, Pastor Manny, stand up like a natural bone man. I trust you, Pastor Manny. I'm going to start supporting you with everything I got, not just the tithe and the offer, but I'm going to start endowing and sending trust. And maybe I got a car or a boat or a house that I have, a property that I own. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to your church and your ministry. You're standing tall there in Harlem, and, uh, I, and I'm going to help you. I, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. You know how to help you. Know how to, you want to call me and talk personally to me. The telephone number is 877-777-0734. Want to talk to me personally. Go to outlaw.org and you can send me an email and I'll get it tonight. And I email and I'll respond to you. Want to talk to me or just go to Cash App and start giving on Cash App. Help me. I'm a stomp down man. I'm a brother. Now I'm a stomp down. I'm a trooper. I, I ain't no fly by night. I ain't no sellout. I'm a show enough, stomp down. I'm the Lord's servant, quote for crying out loud. I said, 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 I'm the Lord's servant for crying out loud. So you, this is a good solid ground to sow your seed. Good solid ground to sow your seed. You can call me at 877-777-0734. Go to outlaw.org and go to and, and find out our email address and, 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 and go ahead and email me. All right. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or 
or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be like led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.